Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. It is a growing concern for law enforcement. Needles found scattered on the ground in parks, on roads, and in the pockets of the people they arrest. To combat the issue in Clay County, every deputy carries a sharp box. WIMT's Macy Marie rode along with the sheriff as he hit the streets to clean up some of the mess. Sheriff shops, containers. It is a tool every deputy at the Clay County Sheriff's Office keeps with them. What you do is just take the lid off and then we'll put the sharpie down in here. Chief Deputy Clifton Jones says they get constant calls about people finding needles. Those calls increasing in the past few years. Everybody, they call in all the time. We found needles here, we found needles there. Every day they carry these sharp boxes and gloves and most of the time the tools get put to use. It's become scary. Sheriff Patrick Robinson took me on a ride through Clay County, pointing out some of their trouble spots. Especially over at the park, we could go over at the park and find all kinds around the kids stuff. We were only out for about 30 minutes when we came across this. It's like at every week. A large pile near River and Bridge Street. Working carefully, the sheriff began picking up. I've known uh, several officers that's been poked by them. He hopes seeing this will make people more aware of the issue. My biggest fear is uh, somebody getting poked and, and uh, getting a uh, disease that can't be cured. Telling everyone to keep an eye out and be careful where you step. In Clay County, Macy Marie, WYMT Mountain News. The sheriff says this issue is certainly not exclusive to Clay County. If you see needles where you live, do not pick them up and call your local law enforcement agency. And we've seen those clouds increasing throughout the day. That's because of that warm front that's moved through today. But good news is it has kept us dry. You'll notice here as we go ahead and take a look at Interstate 64 up into Moorhead, you'll notice those clouds increasing throughout the day. Pockets of sunshine at times. And as we look over into Jackson right now, we are seeing the sun shining there with those partly cloudy skies. Temperatures at 77 degrees. So feeling pretty good out there. So definitely get out this evening and enjoy it. Most of us into the upper 70s to lower 80s. Very warm for this time of year. Definitely above average. I don't think most of us are complaining about that though feeling pretty good outside there's those clouds that's been increasing throughout the day it looks like by the time we get to the overnight hours though we'll be dealing with those partly cloudy skies while some of us right now are dealing with those mostly cloudy skies so you'll see as we head really throughout the overnight hours those partly cloudy cloudy skies continuing good news is that keeps us warm though by the time we get into those early morning hours we really get only get down to about those lower 60s overnight so we have a warm night ahead which will make for an even warmer tuesday we'll have that full forecast coming up in just a little bit steve all right Thank you, Paige. The University of the Cumberlands will soon start a new program, one that will allow special education teachers to teach two class or grade levels instead of just one. WIMT's Hannah Reynolds talks to university staff about the expansion. There are an estimated 2.8 million special needs students across the country. The need for special ed teachers is a national need. In Kentucky, the individualized education program is 2.2 percent higher than the national 13 percent. The newly approved preschool through fifth grade elementary education with an academic emphasis in learning and behavioral disorders special education for grades preschool through 12 will soon help bridge that gap exciting university students and staff. The 30 students that we have enrolled, enrolled right now, they're not all from Kentucky. Expanding horizons for those that choose to take the classes in seat or online, making the program accessible to more future teachers and their students. I think that we are meeting that need across the nation, across the state, in our local area. Broadening the pool of potential certified candidates of teachers in local school districts. The students will benefit tremendously. Which they say will help students get better suited attention in the classroom. I'm very optimistic of what this will hold for our students in the Whitley County School District and for all special education students throughout the state and throughout the country. Expanding education opportunities for teachers and students alike. In Whitley County, Hannah Reynolds, WYMT Mountain News. Registration for the classes begin this summer. Police in Kentucky arrested an Ohio man wanted for the murder of his two-month-old son. 
Officers arrested 27-year-old Cody Caldwell on Saturday. He's charged with the murder of his son, Caden Caldwell. The baby was found not breathing on April 11th in Caldwell's home in Warren County, north of Cincinnati. Police say the baby's death was suspicious. Caldwell waived an extradition hearing in a Lexington courtroom today, and he will be sent back to Ohio to face those charges. We have a traffic alert to pass along. A welcome center along Interstate 75 will be closed tomorrow for maintenance. We've mapped it out for you here. It is the Welcome Center in Whitley County, one mile north of the Tennessee state line, south of Williamsburg. It will remain closed from 7 tomorrow morning until 4.30 tomorrow afternoon. Prestonsburg theater scene is looking forward to some changes following the recent cease of productions from the Jenny Wiley Drama Association. Mayor Les Stapleton said the community will see the Jenny Wiley Amphitheater being put to good use. The city has announced a slate of new productions to take place this summer in a partnership with two local theater companies, Artist Collaborative Theater and the Hatfield and McCoy Arts Council. The mayor says not only will the productions be from local entities, they will also showcase local talent. We're going to have open casting calls that will be announced today through our social media and our website. Uh, we want local artists involved. We want kids. We want these people to learn about the arts from people who've already been doing productions locally. To see a list of the upcoming summer shows, just head over to our website. Governor Matt Bevin signed a new bill today limiting abortions in Kentucky. It's already being challenged by the ACLU. And as Victor Puente tells us today at a news conference, the governor called out Andy Bashir for refusing to defend it. Today, Governor Bevin said he hopes the fight over this law makes it all the way to the Supreme Court. They believe it could have an impact on federal policy. House Bill 5 creates a new ban on abortions in Kentucky. If a pregnant woman wants to have one because of the fetus's sex, race, color, national origin, or disability. Governor Bevin held a ceremonial signing earlier today. The days of hypocrisy have got to end. The days of taking innocent life in America have got to end. The law is already being challenged in court by the ACLU. Bevin criticized Attorney General Andy Bashir for refusing to defend it. A little political stunt on his part to try to gin up support and money for his political aspirations. It's reprehensible. These are human lives. Bashir said defending the law was a waste of taxpayer dollars. What the governor ought to be signing today is a personal check to reimburse the Commonwealth for the hundreds of thousands of dollars that we will owe because of this legislation. Today, Bevin said he hopes the fight goes to the Supreme Court where a more conservative court could potentially use it to overturn Roe versus Wade. This was put in the spotlight, that this was a challenge to our nation's conscience. This, this is going to be taken all the way to the Supreme Court, I have no doubt. There is an injunction against that law being enforced. That will be in place until that ACLU lawsuit is resolved. In Frankfurt, Victor Puente, WKYT. That injunction also applies to the House Bill 9, the fetal heartbeat abortion law. Four people are dead following a crane collapse. It happened as workers were trying to take the crane down from a building under construction on the new Google Seattle campus. Two crane operators died and two drivers died when the crane fell onto their cars. Investigators are still looking into what caused the crane to fall. Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention discuss the latest measles cases in the United States, and it is record-breaking. And those warmer temperatures continue into your Tuesday and into your Wednesday as well. Few chances increase Tuesday. The best chance for rain is going to be Thursday into your Friday. I'll have the, more of that coming up in just a little bit. Some new regulations proposed aim to make the tattooing industry safer, but part of these regulations have some shop owners upset.